This is a reducer with ball bearings by the company Logarithmic Technologies. They're still working on a first prototype, but they were able to send me the 3D files so I could make a 3D printer version. By the way, this is not a sponsor video. I just found this reducer very interesting, so I wanted to make a video about it. The functionality is relatively simple. We have three main components, the input disk, the output disk, and the modulator. The input disk has a groove in an almost elliptical shape. This component is directly coupled to the motor. So as it spins, the ball bearings follow the path of the groove. Then the modulator has slots, which constrain the motion of the balls. Typically, the modulator is fixed so it cannot rotate. The slots create a linear motion in the balls. On the output disc, we have a groove or track with a different shape, which also makes contact with the balls. The linear motion of the balls generated by the input and the modulator forces the output disc to rotate. Because of the path difference, the output rotates at slower speed than the input. Here, I am rotating the output, which forces the ball into a linear motion. But in reality, this will be reversed as the balls drive the output. In theory, this type of reducer should be able to produce very high efficiency, as it essentially works as a bearing. Also, I believe we should be able to have very low or no backlash by adjusting how much we compress the balls in between the output and input discs. Based on my conversations with the CTO of the company, he mentioned he came up with this design at the same time this patent by Frank Folino was released. This patent only describes a graphical method to generate the tracks the balls need to follow. However, the CTO of Logarithmic Tech said they were able to come up with the proper mathematical equations of these curves. I also came across this other patent, which describes a similar type of reducer. The input disc has an elliptical track. The fixed metal plate has holes instead of slots. And the output disc has a hypocycloid type of track. The hypocycloid curve, by the way, is generated by tracing a point on a small circle that rolls inside a larger circle. Fortunately, this patent does show the equations to generate the curves. I made a simple script that creates the curves and saves them in DXF format so I can import them in SOLIDWORKS. I had to make some modifications to the equations as I ran into some issues with the ones in the patent. However, I think this should in theory achieve the speed reduction stated in the patent. The blue line is the ellipse, which is the input of the drive, and the orange is the hypocycloid curve, which is the output. The reduction ratio is given by one plus the number of balls divided by two. In this example, we have 24 balls, which gives a ratio of 13. As you can imagine, one constraint is that we need to space out the balls so that they can all fit within the perimeter of the curves. If we try to make this configuration smaller by reducing the diameter, then the ball holes will overlap. So I had the idea of simply populating every other hole. This way we can make the drive more compact. I imported the curves into SOLIDWORKS to make a quick proof of concept. The yellow part is the output with a hypocycloid curve, and the green is the input with the ellipse curve. The idea is to just move the input by hand to see if I get the desired motion. The input does seem to achieve the desired motion as the balls follow the path. But when testing the output disc, the ball seemed to jump from one position to the next. Perhaps it's a tolerance issue, or perhaps there's an issue with the generation of these curves. In any case, I will post a link to the script if you want to try it on your own. Now, back to the design by Logarithmic Tech. The equation of motion of this configuration is given by this relationship. Like I mentioned, 
typically the modulator will be fixed, which means equation is simplified to this. In other words, a reduction ratio of 7.5 approximately. The negative sign means that the input and output rotate in the opposite direction. We can see that on this clip. I send a command of 1,350 degrees to the stepper motor, and this results in a rotation at the output of 180 degrees. If we go back to the equation, we can see that if the modulator speed is not zero, then that gives us more flexibility to achieve different reduction ratios. Of course, we might need a second motor for that, which makes things complicated. Here's a video of an earlier prototype they sent to me showing a double output where the modulator is also spinning. An interesting application they mentioned was the idea of having a second stage, which would be a planetary gear. Typically, in a planetary gear drive, one of the components is fixed. However, if none of the components are fixed, say the sun gear is driven with the output of a logarithmic drive, and the carrier is driven by the modulator, then that could generate massive reductions. This is another video where they apply this concept of contra-rotation to propellers. I was planning to do some torque and backlash tests as usual. However, I prefer to wait for a real prototype if I'm able to get my hands on one. I don't think this type of reducer will be a good option for 3D printing as we have a point contact between the steel ball and the printed components, which will quickly create indentations. To summarize, these are my thoughts about the pros and cons of this reducer. Like I mentioned, I believe there's potential for high efficiency and low backlash. The design is also relatively simple with a low number of parts. I think it is also great that we don't have an eccentric cam like, for example, cycloidal reducers have. This means the reducer is inherently balanced. And finally, the option of having a contra-rotation at the output could be useful for some applications. Now for the cons. Having point contacts between the balls and other components means this will have to be manufactured with high hardness materials, which would mean a high cost in low quantities. Miniaturization is another question I would have. Although this design I have is only for demonstration purposes, it is very large and only with a reduction of 7.5. So I wonder if it is possible to have more compact designs with higher ratios. But let me know what you think. Feel free to download the 3D file of this drive if you want to take a closer look. I will have the link in the description. Make sure to follow me on Instagram if you want more regular updates about the projects I am working on like this three-axis robot arm with harmonic drives. On my next video, I will go over a new cycloidal drive design that I've been working on.